Do you hate ads? I hate ads. You know what I love? Patreon.com slash Inkdependence, where patrons get access to a patron-only Discord, ad-free videos, and the joy of knowing they help support this channel. Hello folks, welcome to Ink Dependence. I'm Mike, and this is Second Takes for March of 2024. Of course, it's halfway through April, but look, March and the beginning of April were real busy, and so I'm just getting to it. But I have a few things today to talk about, so let's get into this. We'll talk about some standard pens, we'll talk about some stuff I've been using, we'll talk about like how it's been working, paper, all that kind of jazz. So let's get going. All right, first things first, uh, I have been using this pen right here. This is an Esterbrook Esty in the Nuevo Blue colorway, and uh, this has a current cartridge in it and that cartridge is uh this is Girbon's Pearl Noir, and uh, this is an ink that I notoriously have disliked. Uh, I have had a bottle of this for a long time. I probably first reviewed it like, I don't know, 10 years ago or something like that, and hated it, have hated it ever since. Every time I've inked it up, it's been terrible. So I went ahead and just bought some more because that makes sense, right? No, the reason I did that is because everybody says, you know, this is a really great ink and everybody really likes it. And so I'm like, ah, maybe I missed something. So I got some cartridges, and let me tell you what, this is, uh, I think, probably uh, its third chance and uh, it's doing pretty well actually I have been liking this just fine I think it's a pretty good very dark gray kind of ink it's not exactly a black but it flows really well it hasn't dried up and uh, that's been my major problem with this ink forever is that it just doesn't flow and it stops up in my pen and it just infuriates me every time so this one actually works so good job cartridges I think maybe my bottles bad I, and always has been that's weird huh so if there's an ink that you hate and everybody else loves I don't know give it another shot I'll probably do another review of this uh, this ink soonish I've been going back and thinking about some some inks from the past that I want to kind of re-review so this is going to be one of those next up I have some of this this is the uh the Mormon Jurius paper which says there Girare, girare in Italian means a vow or a declaration to God. The meaning of ism is philosophy. I mean, kind of. Uh, juris is a coin. Uh, juris? I, look, man, I, somebody gave me a pronunciation for that, but I don't know. This is a weird name and I wish it was, I wish it was easier to say. I love Mormon paper. It's really good paper, but man, Nemosyne, that's like their major line of papers is a big pain in the butt to say because people want to say it's Nemocene or Nemosyne or some other thing and like nobody really knows. And this one, this one's even worse because it's a made up word. So I guess we can just say it however we want, but whoa, just call it something that's easier. Please, Mormon, take pity on a uh, us poor reviewers have to say these words but this is a really good paper it's a premium paper it might be i think i said somewhere this is like their highest grade of paper so uh, i got some of this from jet pens a month or so ago maybe two and uh, it looks like this it's a very thick paper it says it is a uh, an a5 seven millimeter uh, lines um i think it said the weight on here somewhere but now i can't now i can't find the weight anywhere huh I mean, that's another thing that should be pretty plain on these. I, I don't know. Maybe I'm missing it. But I want to say it's like a 90 GSM, but it feels very, very thick, uh, which is interesting. It feels kind of cushiony to write on. I like it a lot. Uh, it's um, it's not cushiony in a weird way, like sometimes Cosmo Airlight and some of those can be, where it feels like you're kind of like fighting the paper to write sometimes. It's just kind of like... I don't know, it feels thick and it has like a feeling of quality. Now I have been using this in my plotter and so I've got, uh, I've got, I take my six hole punch and I punch extra holes because while there are a zillion holes in this thing, none of them fit a six, like a standard six ring A5, which is annoying to me, but I'm sure it's part of some system. However, if they just made some of these holes a little bit bigger in like some other places, like we could have just had like really versatile. If you're gonna put 30 holes in the thing already, actually does it even say how many holes? No, and I'm not gonna count, but you can stop the, you can stop the clock and like count it if you want, but it's a lot. Uh, I do like writing on it. I'll do a little writing test here for you uh, here in a little bit. In fact, you know, why not? We'll just do it now. Let's give you some, uh, let's give you some Pearl Noir action here. And as you can see, this ink works really well. Like you can see it's actually wet on the page. It didn't, it hasn't like stopped writing inexpl inexplicably. It's been really nice. And uh, I like this ink on this paper real well. This is some wet pen ink. This ink has a bit of a color shift and it's got a bit of a like a, an interesting multi-chrome shading thing going on when it dries. And I think it looks nice on here, too. This is just kind of like a very smooth, pleasant ink, uh, paper to write on. So, yeah, grab yourself some if you get a chance because it's real nice. Also, look at that wet paint, wet pen Iliot Bay. 
it's really a little cat hair on there. It's really nice looking. Hey, come on, get out of here. I told you, I told you, no cat hair on this paper. But yeah, it's looking real nice. Look at how it dries and like changes colors. I kind of love it when an ink does that. So yeah, very good. I've used everything on this from uh, pens and pencils to ball points and fountain pens and gel pens and all that jazz. And it has been excellent every time. So this uh, this paper, however in the world you say this weird word, uh, is quite nice. So yeah, find some of that at your favorite Mormon retailer because I really like Mormon paper. It's very good. Okay, the next thing I wanted to talk about were some standard pens, and they're these. These are really interesting pens. They are Pentel Matte Hop pens, and they come in a bunch of different colors, but they are sort of, um, like, they're meant to be kind of like uh, like, like you'd see in comic books or uh, some sort of a comic situation. They are extremely, uh, like, dense colors. They have a very, like, broad and bold stroke to them. And what I found I like best about these is how they work on Post-it notes, and that might sound weird, but sometimes Post-it notes just like like they're not that they're not that fun to write on i use them all the time but i mean if you write them with a ballpoint like it, it looks fine if you write them with a fountain pen sometimes it looks pretty good and other times it just doesn't but like look at this though it's so it's like just, sh it just shines off the paper not as shiny as this one this one's really interesting uh but here it is on just a blue post-it note these are just some books that somebody was mentioning i was like oh yeah i want to try these out just it's extreme it like just pops off the page it does this with all of these colors actually they've been pretty great one of the keys of this paper is to or rather this these pins is to write pretty slowly uh, because they have this big 1.0 millimeter tip and they are a big gel pen and so sometimes with these big gel pens you will get some real Railroading, as you saw there. And it can take a little bit to get them going. You probably give it a little bit of a scribble somewhere else before you start going. Just kind of like a, a way that these pens work. Uh, in fact, I found that with a bunch of these 1.0s. And actually, it works a heck of a lot better if you slow down, which can be tough, but. It looks a lot better if you do. So uh, the green is very nice. Here's the, I'll, I'll just give you a little scribble of each one of these real quick. So because these are a big thick gel point and they do have a, uh, a ball on the tip, uh, one of the things to, to think about with these, and actually this is kind of true of things like uh, jelly rolls and things like that. Man, I got more ink on my hands than I kind of thought I did today, is that if you press down too hard, it will railroad. And also, weirdly, it works better if you write fairly vertical, uh, like a gentle stroke and vertical is kind of the way to go with these if you want to get the best lines. But once these dry... And they do change quite a bit as they dry, like they get darker and they get like kind of more dense and powerful and matte looking. Uh, you can see on this paper, I was just kind of pushing the ink around on the post-it notes. You don't really get that as much because the post-it notes are more absorbent than this paper, which is uh, like pretty much like bleed and show through proof. It's pretty awesome, but not the best for these, perhaps. But I tell you what. It looks really good on post-it notes like it makes them so readable. It's kind of impressive. Uh, let's see. Is this a black one? Yeah, it's actually one of the few things I found that will write on these post-it notes. Like these circular ones seem great, but they're actually not they're actually not that good to write on or they're not very sticky. I just don't like them very much. But these Mad Hop pens actually make them kind of usable. So that's neat. So these are pretty cool. I found these. I think these are also jet pens and they come in some other colors, too. I want to say there's an orange one that I don't have. So I need to get another set because I actually really like these. While we're on standard pens, I want to talk about this little set. So this is a set of pens that I got on uh, Amazon because they don't sell them in the US as far as I can tell. And these are pilot pens. You see they're pilot Japan and they're called uh, Ilmali. I don't know what that means. I don't really know any information about these, except that I wanted to try them because they look like interesting colors. Like they're all kind of these off black colors. So we've got like uh, we've got a like a really dark, like a blue black. We got this this purple one, this olive one, another kind of like, I don't know, another like dark blue. We got this other more different green that's kind of piney. And then we have a brown and we have a, a Merlot color. But all the writing on here is in Japanese pretty much, except for the 0.5 millimeter. But they are a very nice pen to use. They have this nice soft uh, grip section here that is really pleasant to hold on to. The click action here 
on the clip is pretty pleasant. I like guess just kind of a satisfying click. The ink has been really nice. Uh, <laughs> weirdly, it came with one of these. It was just like part of the set. And I don't really know why. Like this is, <laughs> this is, it has a stylus on the end, like a little squishy stylus. I don't know. I don't even think that kind of stuff works on phones anymore. I'm not really sure what the, what the story is with this. And it seems like it's just a blue ballpoint. I, I don't know. It's kind of weird, but I mean, whatever, it came with it. So this is an interesting set of pens. I'm going to do a review on them uh, in the near future, but I've really been enjoying using these. I think you should probably check them out. I think I saw them first on uh, Brad the Pennetic Dowdy stream. I was like, oh, those look neat. So yeah, yeah giving those a we giving those a little bit of a try, and they've been quite nice to write with. Um, other stuff I've really been enjoying in those is, uh, I already talked about these, I think once or twice, but these, these inner gels in this set are super nice. I was using this one the other day for just like, I've been doing some uh, oral presentations in class. And so like, I've been scribbling a lot of notes and like grading on the fly. And this needlepoint, uh, inner gel has been really nice. I love the color this one has. It's just like a, just like a really nice kind of, I don't know, kind of a, I don't know, it's kind of bright, but like not too bright. It's just kind of a really interesting color, kind of cranberry. And I haven't seen that before, so I dig it. Okay, so one more thing, and then we'll get to what I inked up this week uh, or this last uh, month. And that is, I want to talk about, uh, I want to talk about glue tape. Um, so I got this one first because glue tape is a really cool, I always thought it was a really cool product, you know? So you, ha you had like old whiteout stuff and now you have like the whiteout tape stuff that you can put over things and write over the tape, which is better than the liquid one for a bunch of reasons. Uh, and then there's like this glue tape stuff, which I was like, oh, that's cool. And so one thing I like to do is I like to make my own envelopes. So it's just a thing that makes me want to send more letters is I get to make the envelope and I can kind of make it my own and make it like a different color or whatever. And you're kind of want to have some kind of glue to like put the pieces together right so i got this elmer stuff and uh it is bad this elmer's glue tape is just kind of trash it doesn't work at all it's uh you can see it's like little dots or some such thing i don't know if you actually see it on there but like it comes off as little dots on the page and it's just not it's not permanent. It's not very sticky. Uh, I can't find a use for this that is any good. And I have tried a lot. Like this is the, I think, pretty sure this is the side that is, uh, uh, yeah, this is the side that's got to be like coming off of. So I've used almost this whole thing. I keep trying to use it because Elmer's is like the first name in glue other than crazy and uh, uh, super. It's Elmer's, but it's kind of junk. This right here, on the other hand, this is Ad Tech Crafters Tape Permanent, and this stuff is great. I use it for all sorts of things. I use it to glue the you know little chromatography strips into my uh, my review pages. I use it for making envelopes. It doesn't come loose. Uh, it's been very good. It's not terribly expensive. I found this on Amazon. I'll try to remember to put a, a link in the description, probably an affiliate link. But uh, this stuff is very good. I thought it came with refills, and I could get like refills and not have to throw away the big container, but I can't find the refills anymore online. So I don't know if they still make them or not, but this is very good. It is, uh, it is smooth. It is clean. It is easy to use. There's no mess. You just kind of put it on the page and go, Zzzt, and it like makes a line of like glue tape and then you just like stick whatever you need to stick to it. And it's been awesome. So yeah, get some of this ad tech stuff. Uh, is this upside down? Huh. I think I can never get these to, there we go. Uh, the ad tech is very good. The Elmer's is, I'm sorry, Elmer's you and uh, look, I love this cow. Look at that cow. That cow knows that this tape is bad. Don't buy this. It's going right in the trash as soon as I finish this video. Because I threw it in the trash. I was like, ah, no, I should tell people about this. Because this is good. This is bad. Buy this. Avoid this. All right. All right. Let's talk about what I inked up this month. Or that is for March. Okay. So the first thing I inked up for March is this one right here. This is a, uh, this is journalized deep space Aurora, which is a really cool ink. And I put it in this, uh, the shown design pen, which I should go and find for you. This is one I picked up at the, I want to say, I'm pretty sure the Baltimore show this year. Uh, this is called bismuth crystal. This, uh, this, this finish. And you can find this, uh, on the Goulet pens. They have a, a shorter, like a pocket six in the faceted version in this colorway, And it is great. And then I have on here a, uh, a food a nib that Audrey made and I was like well I don't know what this journalized stuff is going to be like it's got a lot of shimmer I'm a little dubious about it so I'm going to put it in here because that food a will write for sure and uh, guess what I love it and I like it so much actually I had to go and buy a bottle you can see it shining there so I bought a bottle of that uh, very recently at the last pin show I was at so that begins March then uh, we've got uh, my narwhal horsehead nebula pin uh, with diamine cold-blooded 
Blooded. This is uh, Diamine and Sugar Turtle. Really like Cold Blooded. That's a great ink. I've got here, uh, this is Sagat Black at, uh, Saga at Black Gulaman, which is a Robert Oster and Endless Pens collaboration that they had for the... Uh, the Manila pen show. And I have it in my Leonardo Minto Zero Hades, which is this pen right here. It just kind of fits it really well. So Endless sent this and that ink out to me. I'll be having a review of this and the ink coming soon. But uh, short story is I really like it. It does have a lot of shimmer in it. You can see that shimmer does move a little bit. You'll have that with uh, heavy shimmers uh, pretty often. Next, we have Dark Lilac. This is the 2016 version. And I, uh, I put this in a pen because I wanted to compare it to the new one and to some other stuff. So uh, I filled it uh, very slightly with that ink. Then, uh, then there's Lamy Dark Lilac for 2024, and you can see that one is not purple at all. Now, this doesn't usually um, this doesn't usually move. Let me see if I can. Yeah, I just closed the I closed the book too quickly and I smeared it. So I haven't had that sheen move on me, which is nice. But you'll also notice that this ink, which you know, review coming soon or whatever, is pretty much entirely green, whereas the original one is just kind of purple. Even on this Tomoe River, it didn't really do any sheening. It has it's known for having a mild sheen of like an interesting color. And you can see a little bit of there on that L, but that's about it, because this one all sheen, that one not nearly so much. Next up, this is that wet pen Elliott Bay that I was just uh, showing you. Uh, I forgot one of the T's on there. That's my bad. Uh, and that's a Platinum 3776 Sands of Komodo, which is an absolutely gorgeous uh, pen. This is a North American exclusive, and uh, it's kind of just beautiful cerulean blue and rose gold. Like, absolutely, absolutely awesome, and it goes great with this ink. So, you know, grab one of these if you can, because it's super cool. Next up, there's that Urban Pearl Noir, uh, which I have had in there for like a month. We've got Diamine Raise a Glass in this Monteverde Invincia, which is, um, hmm, ah, it's right here. This is the Vega, and uh, Yaffa gave me this to uh, to check out and do a review for. I haven't reviewed it yet, but I will soon. Just kind of wanted to put it through its paces, but it has a 1.1 stub on there, and this Diamine Raise a Glass is the final ink from this year's ink vent. And it's uh, it's like a sh slightly sheeny, very shimmery purple. It's really pleasant to write with, especially with this 1.1 nib. So check that out. Next up, Troublemaker Into the Depths in a Leonardo Prisma. This is a Troublemaker ink that was made uh, for flax pens. And again, I, I keep closing this too soon or something. You can see it's like transferred on the other side. It's, that's totally on me. It doesn't smear. I don't know why. I don't know why it's doing that, but. Yeah, you can rub on it, it doesn't smear at all, just I closed it too soon or whatever. So yeah, really pretty, very sheeny dark blue, looks nice. Uh, and then this is Robert Oster and Galen Leather Admiral Blue, which I put in another pen because I realized, I realized I never reviewed this ink and that sucks because I've had it for like two years and I love it and I have been using it constantly. I just forgot that I hadn't reviewed it. I totally thought I had. So Galen Leather Admiral Blue with Robert Oster, super duper good. Uh, last couple here, actually last one is this one. This is the other uh, of the three Troublemaker inks from uh, Flax Pen to Paper and Troublemaker. This is Sage Green. And it is a super duper dark green, especially in this double broad Estabrook J. Uh, but it's been really nice to write with. So it's been real cool. Check that out at Flax Pen to Paper. And then I've got a couple that are coming up for next month. So I, I, just, I just inked these up like in the last uh, last day. So those are coming soon. All right, there you go. So that's sort of my, uh, my second takes for this month or rather for last month, March. I'll have another one for you in just a few weeks for April. And uh, until then, think about what you put in the world, make it a better place. Tell Tell a vendor that I said hi when you go and visit them. It always helps out uh, me and lets them know where you're going to see stuff and like all that kind of jazz. So thanks for the, to those of you that have been doing it. Check out the affiliate links below. Those help out the channel. Subscribe, like it, tell a friend, leave a comment, do all that YouTube stuff that tells YouTube that you like this material and this uh, this stuff. And I'll see uh, I'll, I'll see you in another video soon. Until then, peace out. <laughs>